Over the course of the last five days, I've been watching Shroud and Skadoodle play Ranked and Apex Legends on their quest to reaching Apex Predator. Now, the grind has been crazy, and if you haven't seen them play, I definitely suggest it or looking at the VODs. The high-level gameplay in Apex is ridiculous. But what I also started to notice as I was just taking time to watch and not play myself was they started being able to analyze some of the things they were doing, and I realized that there were a lot of things they were doing that felt like secrets I hadn't even been incorporating into my own gameplay and I rarely saw other players do. In fact, I got so interested in what they were doing that made them so successful in their quest playing at high levels that I decided to compile a list of 7 things that Shroud does that most people don't to be successful in Apex Legends. What I found amazing is that most people believe this myth that because Shroud has 12 hours a day and because he has great aim, that's the only reason he's good at games. And if they had the same thing, they would be exactly as good as Shroud. That is incorrect. The truth is, Shroud does a lot of things under the surface level that make him a great gamer, and these are the things we're going to go over in this video. Now, you may not get 12 hours a day to play. You may still have to work a day job like I've done most of my life up until going full-time content creator last week. But you also may find that these tips during the times that you do have to play make you a better player and can start training some skills and behaviors that are relatively unknown to a lot of players to make you stand out even if you only have a limited amount of time to game. Now the first secret thing that Shroud does in Apex Legends that most players never do is grind with a committed squad. A squad? What the heck? Of course that's an important factor. I knew that. But did you? See, a lot of people realize that he plays with the same players, but they don't realize how important it is to his own development. And a lot of people don't realize how important it is for their own development as well. I've had a lot of moments where I've tried to play solo in almost every game I've played, but when my environment keeps changing in terms of my players, their ability, their communication level, it becomes very hard for me to gauge my own ability in a set situation. A lot of us have a few friends we'll play with here and there, but how many of us grind Apex ranked or grind any game ranked with the same friends? friends all the time every single time we play. It is an important factor because it allows you one thing that really is hard to come by in most first person shooters when you're randomly queuing into lobbies, and that's consistency. You know what you're getting from your teammates. When you can do that, you can realize how you're either working with them effectively or whether you're dropping the ball in a couple of situations. Obviously, communication with a squad is super important, but getting a squad is very important as well because it develops a layer of foundational responsibility that you have a team you're coming back to, not randoms that you're gonna keep on changing every single game. So when you make a big, big moment happen, people can acknowledge that. But when you make a big mistake, people can also acknowledge that, and you have somebody to help you take accountability for what you went wrong, whether you were pushed a little too far, maybe you didn't put down an ult when you should have as Watson, or maybe you just didn't see a flank coming when it was your job to look out for it. All of those things are not gonna be called out by randoms next lobby, but they will if you have a squad of guys or girls or whoever it is that you're playing with on the daily. These allow you to get better, these allow you to focus on those small things, and when you communicate with a team-like environment, you will find things that you don't do well that you never realized. That is one of the big keys, how Shroud keeps staying good and keeps improving. He puts himself in that team environment, and they allow each other to build off of their strengths and weaknesses and keep each other accountable. The number two secret that Shroud uses to be so good at Apex Legends is that he burns his ships. Now, if you haven't heard of this great story, there's a general who once crossed the sea with an army ready to go to war. When he got there and his army was on the sand ready to face the enemy, he saw that they outnumbered him 10 to 1. It was an uphill battle to say the least. What he did, instead of going back to his ships or leaving his ships behind as an option to retreat, he took a flame and he lit every single ship on fire. There was now no escape and the only way to get through and get back home to safety was to win this war. And that is what Shroud does in every single fight. Now, the moral of that tale is that when you go to a place and you have an easy out, like a ship that can take you back home, if things don't look good, you don't fight as hard. When you burn your ships, there's only one way, and that's through your obstacle, and you have to give 100% effort and focus. And that is something that Shroud does all the time. I I mean, this guy plays like an actual CS match is going on. When I get on the computer, I notice that I like to play a lot more lackadaisically. I mean, how many of you jump on and just kind of 
play. You don't think about, hey, I need to prepare. I need water. I need to sit here and really focus all of my energy like this is do or die. Because if you don't do that, then you're allowing yourself to not have that full level of mental focus that will make you a better player. This is something that I think is very unknown to a lot of people. The mental side of gaming and the mental side of athleticism in sports is something that I worked on a lot in my career playing soccer for UCLA, getting drafted by DC United. I know how impactful it is when I teach young kids about what your mentality can do to change your impact physically on the field. And the same thing goes when you're playing like Shroud. I mean, think about what he's playing for. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of viewers weekly, and for reputation and skill, on display and critique every single match. I mean, when you look at it, if someone's watching behind your shoulder, you might play a little bit more intensely, right? Now, he's got thousands of people watching him, so his level of focus on whether this matters or not, even though he's a very chill guy, is at a higher level. It's one thing to conjure up all that mental focus when you're on stage in front of people playing for a million dollar prize pool. It's another thing to do it when you're sitting in your bedroom with your sweatpants and you have no real stakes in the matter. If you establish some type of personal stakes or goals, and or you make believe you've got a thousand people watching, or hey, maybe you stream and only one person is there, you may find that your actions start to shift and change drastically so that you care more, you're more focused, and thus you play at a higher level of attentiveness and thus perform better. The number three thing that Shroud does that most players don't do is they train their aim every day. Now, a lot of this has to do with the fact that Shroud is a full-time gamer. Not all of us can play games every day, but I encourage you, if you want to get better at Apex Legends and want to know why he's so good, to spend a little bit of time every single day training your aim. I've made them, I've watched them, most of us have seen at least one aim video in our lives. We've seen this show up because we felt like our aim was bad. And one thing we do in life is we try, we fail, and then we stop. Then we get the urge again to go out and play because we haven't played in a while, then we try, our aim isn't that great, we fail, and then we get upset. Why would we expect our aim to change after watching one video? That video is not controlling our arm, we are. Practicing is all about bridging the gap between poor performance and great play. There's no way to just get great aim. There's no way LeBron James just becomes a, a player able to shoot a three and slam dunk. These players stay so good because they've built up the habit of playing at a high level and developing great aim. Now, building habits is something a lot of people don't know about. We talk about this in psychology, which is what I studied in high school and at UCLA and what my bachelor's is in. Now, it usually takes about 33 days to build a habit. You've seen some people say 21, some people say 66 at this point. So maybe you wanna play it safe and go for that a little bit over two month number. But the idea should be the same with aim training. If you spend 10 minutes, five minutes, even 15 minutes with the same gun in the same game with the same sensitivity, see how that improves. Do it in the morning, do it at night before you go to bed. Don't make it a priority to play, make it a priority to train. And if you do that, you will watch this improve. You're not a full-time gamer, so you will not have built that habit up yet. But if you take this next few months to try and say, I'm gonna focus on building the habit, you'd be surprised at how your aim will change for the rest of your life. Honestly, I'd love to to know if you guys are going to try to do this so leave me a comment down below if you want to take on the challenge and also check back in on the video after you're done to let me know how it's gone and how much you found that you've improved moving on to the number four secret that shroud does that most players in apex don't do and that is take on challenges. Now, there's no way to do something amazing without trying to do something amazing. You don't just own a hotel. Who thinks they're going to buy a hotel watching this video? If you said no or never even thought about it, newsflash, you probably won't buy a hotel. Why? Because it's a big thing to do, and big things don't just happen to people. People have to make them happen, accept them, and more importantly, be open to them. They say success is when luck and opportunity meet, but where do they meet? They meet you. You've got to put yourself in between both of them and maybe a little bit of hard work in between. When I watch Shroud, I realize that he believes that he can and should win any play. And the more that he does that, the more confidence he gets from actually achieving it. The time he makes mistakes, he owns them, which is more challenging but rewarding in the long run. Or he has a fantastic external locus of control that says, well, we were screwed, that guy had a better weapon or he's in a better position or blah, 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 so that he doesn't lose confidence to do it again. By saying that 
the game screwed us and not him. He can maintain a strong sense of belief that if he did the same thing again, it probably would have worked. He just needed the ball to bounce his way. Stroud takes on challenges constantly and improves as he completes them. And if he doesn't, he brushes it off to a bad circumstance, which makes him still feel confident in taking on more challenges. As humans, we learn from experience. And if you don't give yourself the experience of stepping out of your comfort zone for something that's a normal play for you, it's very hard to grow as a player and start expanding what you're capable and feeling confident doing in the middle of a game. And just like that person who finally buys a hotel, once they've done that, they can move on to other things. It's not that hard to buy a hotel anymore. And he keeps expanding his abilities because he keeps taking on new challenges and new risks. But one of the things that makes that possible is the number five secret that he has that most players don't at this level and that's confidence, an insane amount of confidence. Now there's a level of confidence that's going to the club, show a girl you're interested by buying her a drink type confidence. Now there's another level where you walk up and you grab her by the waist and say, you're gonna be my wife, which I don't recommend because you know, that's probably harassment in some form, but however, you get the difference. There's a level of audacity that can often be employed to make things happen in the world. And it's those big ideas that sometimes make all the difference between success and failure. The thing about Shroud and Skadoodle and Dizzy and Mendo and some of these players is their confidence is so high they make plays that are unpredictable to nearly everyone else. Think about it. If you're a good player, you'll, you'll usually think, what would I do and expect from someone in this situation? You're shooting down somebody in a corner. You say, all right, I'll put myself in their shoes and anticipate their movements. They're going to run out this way. I'll get ready to laser them as they try to move into cover. But what if they do something so confident that you would never expect it, that you would get caught off guard by? When they go for those crazy headshots from long range, or they push you when they should be hiding under cover because you just poked off all their shield, that's how Shroud and these guys get these insane trades and have these crazy Twitch clips. It's that willingness and that belief to do something audacious that throws off their opponents and that gives them a half second advantage. And they make things happen from there because they've burnt their ships and they have the next tip down, which is one of the most important things that most people don't realize about why they're so good. Now we're five tips down, two tips to go. If you have any tip that you feel like should be included, make sure to leave that in the comment section below or just leave a comment about how you've enjoyed the video this far. Now moving on to the number six secret, it's the speed of play. Play. Most people don't realize that there's really not much different between what Shroud is doing and what you're doing. In fact, a lot of people complain about the fact that they feel there's just no way to ever be that good. And you know what? There may be some truth to that because they realize they aren't necessarily going to put in that amount of time to be as good as Shroud is. But it doesn't mean that he's doing things that are so odd, so unusual, so impossible to input. What he's doing is that they're actually competing at a much faster level. In soccer and at UCLA, we had a very common discussion about the difference between college players, high school players, uh, club players, and professional players. In fact, I even played against some of my favorite pros of all time and saw this firsthand. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Patrick Vieira, freaking Matarazzi uh, elbowed me in the back of the head and I pushed him down and got a yellow card in one of our scrimmages. Landon Donovan, David Beckham in the Galaxy when we played them in a lot of our games growing up because they were right across town in Carson. The difference that they have over us is that they just do everything a little bit faster. You may say, no way, they're so much bigger. Not really, I had guys on my team that were bigger than them. Well, they're, they're more skillful sometimes, but that's not the difference as to why they're scoring a goal or not. Oh, well, there's so much more technical. They're, they can hit the ball better. No. And Shroud isn't hitting the body of a person more so than you are when your bullets are registering into their hitbox. They're the same thing. It's just happening at a faster pace. In soccer, I could tell that what I did in three touches, Ibrahimovic did in one. Uh, what Shroud does in maybe 10 seconds is what we take 30 seconds to do. Whether it's looting efficiently, whether it's just uh, aiming, managing a fight, healing up, and then getting back into the fight, all of these things are just so much a part of his muscle memory and the repetition that he's used to continually do it that he doesn't have to think about it consciously. And when he's seen those things over and over again, it helps him because he has to uh, eliminate options and make the best and most probable decision for success. But when he's gone through all those options, he realizes that he can make that decision a lot easier. This is the key to improving, and the way to do it is to start very slowly. I mentioned this often, but doing the right technique and getting faster versus trying to be at Shroud's level instantly is what stops people from being great and improving. You cannot sprint before walking. You have to take a step before you take another. Though you can build that speed and you'll one day be ready to take on these challenges, you have to start 
start slower until you're comfortable at that level. It's like social media. When your friend has that new Lamborghini or someone just reached a million subscribers, you say, oh man, look at me. I don't have any of that. But you don't see all the steps they took to get there. When you watch Shroud, you see where he's at because of what he's done. You have to realize that that's not where you are and take your steps one at a time. If you do that, you'll understand a huge secret into improving and that there's not this mysterious level of play that he has that you don't. It's just he's conquered those levels that you're on and you have to keep progressing. Now I racked my brain as to try to figure out the number seven secret, the thing that was the last secret that I was going to give you all after analyzing Shroud's gameplay over five days in a row, five to eight hours a day of watching his entire stream. I thought disengaging, that's a really great tool that he uses and a lot of you mentioned that in my YouTube community tab, I really appreciated that, you're correct. Patience. I thought that was a huge aspect of it too because you have to have a lot of patience at times when you're improving in a skill. It doesn't happen instantly or overnight and especially when you're playing Apex Legends, you've got to wait some fights out rather than trying to rush them. But I came up with one that I thought encompassed all of those things and that it's he sets himself up for success. If I leave you in this video with one essential tip, it's this. Set yourself up for success. This is one of the secrets that Shroud does. And it's really weird because it's so simple that you almost feel stupid hearing it out loud, but it's true. How often do we want to win, but run into a building blind or get third partied out in the open and blame the game? We blame our aim, we blame our luck, but we don't blame our own decision making to take a harder route to accomplish a goal. I ask people, what would you rather do? Kill three people then die immediately over and over again or win every single game that you play? Usually people say 80% of the time they'd rather win. Some people say kill, oh I like to frag, give me skull town or, or give me death, but I don't really believe it. The reason is it's frustrating to try to goal and fail. It creates a negative cycle of feedback. It makes you think, you know, crappy things and feel crappy ways and then you play crappier overall. The truth is when we play Apex, we can make our own rules as to what's a great game or we can win. Shroud and Skadoodle aren't satisfied unless they win. They love those great games where they get kills, but they keep their overall goal in mind through every decision that they make in the battlefield. How often do we get mad that we're late, but we hit snooze four times on our alarm clock? I mean, how many times do we not study for a test and we don't like that we didn't get a great grade? This applies to everything. We sometimes make decisions unconsciously that don't set us up for great things, but then we wish we got great results. There's no logic to it, you know, there's nothing to blame, it just happens. So the thing that these players do is they stay conscious of their goals in each decision as it's an impactful choice setting up their odds and chances to succeed. They keep their end game in mind while operating in the moment. So many people fail to think about that when they get their crazy car lease or their huge house payment, then they find themselves under pressure when their goal was to live a life they love. They don't love what they've set up for themselves, but it was they who set it up. This is pretty much the biggest lesson in the video, and if you can do this, you will make better decisions along every stretch of the road in Kings Canyon and in your life. That's the end of the video guys, thanks so much for watching and make sure you comment down below your favorite tip or tip that you would have included. Have anything that I missed? There were a ton. I can almost make a second video on this and if you guys like this and support it, maybe I will. But hopefully you enjoyed this 7 secrets of Shroud and to how he's so good at Apex Legends and hopefully you learned something as well. Remember to subscribe, turn that notification bell on for my uploads and as always, remember to never give up, never stop gaming and I'll see you all next time.